Hey traders, Parker again with another indicator. Today I'll be introduce you to the um, unbalanced volume with squeeze and uh, let me put it on for you. It's actually unbalanced volume with the squeeze indicator and the Bollinger Bands also. Um, I was watching a video uh, from Jason Poland and True Demon. Uh, they both have YouTube channels and Twitter channels as well. But True Demon was the one that really broke down the unbalanced volume indicator to me. I was uh, using it before when I was a part of a group called the Bullish Bears. They have a YouTube channel too. And they have a um, group as well. So check them out. And the Bullish Bears have a free trading course as well. I'll try and link some of their things in the description. So if you're interested in any of those uh, groups or people, uh, just look in the description. But as you can see, the Bollinger Bands, you have your, your average. And uh, unbalanced volume changes color according to the volume average. So bright green candles would be a uh, 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 high volume. Orange candles would be uh, low volume to the downside. Dark green candles would be low volume to the upside. And the color painting is based off of the Heikinashi candles. So if the Heikinashi is green and above average, it'll be bright green. If Heikinashi is green and it's below average, it'll be uh, dark green. But as you can see right here, the unbalanced volume ripped above all the volume Bollinger Bands and really just kept going. And I would have used this right here as my uh, somewhat like a support. And long as volume, long as the unbalanced volume stayed up there, I would have stayed in the trade, even though it ble uh, crushed down here a little bit. It came right back up and then shot up, but it never did really cross below the average until now. The squeeze indicator is actually in the average. You get a squeeze anytime you see the uh, cyan color, but usually when I'm trading on a lower time period, like the 15 minute or the uh, five minute, I put on a 12 period average. And for me on a five minute, that's an hour. Every five bars is an hour. I mean, every 12 bars is an hour. And that's one of the reasons why I do it. And the same on the 15. It's going to be more than an hour. But uh, that's my reason behind putting on a 12. And you got a squeeze right there. But the way you use the squeeze is when you get a signal, you look at the unbalanced volume. And if it's below average, you don't take it. You can take it to the downside. But for the most part... When you see this and you're not in a trade, don't get in a trade. But as you can see right here, it hit and then it went back to normal and volume shot up. But it's after hours volume. I mean, price shot up after hours volume is going to be light always. And usually when I use it, I take those lines off for the Bollinger Bands because it's in the cloud itself. And I really like using it like this. And this is that stock LGVN. Everybody uh, has been really talking about it. I even did a video on it as well. And it looks like it's supposed to squeeze again today. It's really up after hours. I push it all the way back to show you some historical data. And you had a squeeze over here as well. You got the signal. And you, you're supposed to wait till it, it turns back to norm, normal. But you would have got a, a squeeze to the downside. And it, as you can see, the unbalanced volume went way below the Bollinger Bands. And it's been in a squeeze right there. You could have got in right here. It was above average. It was in a squeeze. But it doesn't look like it's going to be good, especially on that day. I think um, the spy was down that day too. Same thing over here. You got a squeeze right here. And you're waiting for it to turn back normal and you got to cross above you would take the trade and it was way above the bollinger band
And then it went back into this quiet period. And like I said, that's light volume. And I would have used this high right here. Signaling, signaling me for the next breakout period. And boom, it broke out right there. Let me raise it up and see. So yeah, you would use that high as your next breakout. And this somewhat pivot low as your uh, indication if the price is going to drop even more. And that's what, exactly what didn't happen. You got to squeeze and boom. The unbalanced volume shot up. And these yellow periods is basically when the unbalanced uh, volume is flat or equals to itself. And even you got a doji candle right here. And it's after hours. Uh, usually I tell you don't pay the unbalanced volume too much attention when it's after hours because you're not uh, getting regular volume. And so we'll carry it on to the next day. And the way the unbalanced volume works, if, if volume, if if it's a green day, volume is added to the unbalanced volume to carry it over to the next day. If it's a red day, um, uh, that volume for that day is subtracted from the unbalanced volume to give you an indication of the following day. Yeah, it's squeezing. That's only because, I mean, you got to squeeze right here, but that's only because it's after hours. And the Bollinger Bands, you can see how they're real tight all around the uh, unbalanced volume. And look at that. When it turned back to normal, you got to squeeze down to the bottom. And this was a hard squeeze. Squeeze down to the bottom. And it's just really showing you how much volume has been pushed into this to, for it to go down. You got a squeeze indication. And like I said, I wouldn't have took, taken this because one thing, the unbalanced volume is below its average. And it's, it really just got hit and kept going down. The arrows you see are divergences. And the red arrows are, are negative divergence. And the cyan co uh, color arrows are positive divergences. And the divergences are created uh, when unbalanced volume makes a new low while price makes a new high is a negative divergence and when unbalanced volume makes a new high and price makes a new low is a positive divergence and that's exactly what this is it's unbalanced volume with these things with these other indicators added to it and you can see it's kind of shaky i'm not gonna say shaky but it's you know all those ups and downs and everything if you want to smooth it out you can come over here, change it. Right now, it's using the close. You can actually use this right here. The uh, and this is what really the high is based off of. It's based off an of average between a high, low, close, and open divided by four, and it smooths it out for you. And it smooths everything out. But one thing I can say, sometimes these signals can uh, can uh, mess with you when you put it on the uh, the average of the uh, open, high, low, close, and oh yeah. So, but right here it gave you a great sign. You got this hammer candle right here. got the hammer candle right there and boom it shot up from there you got all that uh even though you got negative negative going down to the bottom it, it broke below the bollinger bands and then it shot up from there you can you can wait or you can take it take the trade after the unbalanced cross above its average but according to steve nielsen's book uh candles candlestick charting uh you usually take the trade above the hammer and use the low of the hammer as your risk so you would have taken a trade at 2533 and you would have used the low 2233 
I wouldn't have done that. I would have took taking a trade either at 25 or when I seen price bounce back down to 25 to show that it was a support. And you can see it's pretty early in the morning. And that's where you see all these uh, wig waggling all this stuff. It's because the uh, the way the uh, the average works. So put it back on the close. You shouldn't get that as much. But for the most part, it shows you a lot of volume was used to push it to the downside. And even right here, even though you got those spikes, it was a, still a lot of volume going out of the stock. There's one of your gray candles where um, unbalanced volume is basically flat and not really doing anything. And it's equal in itself. But something happened after hours and it really pushed up. And right now, uh, a couple of people are expecting it to squeeze today. So hopefully it does. And this works on all time periods. So let's push it down to a five minute. And like I said, five minutes is usually why I use 12 on the daily. I push it up to a 10 or a 20. Then that just controls the average and the Bollinger Bands and the squeeze. And even on the five minutes, it still works pretty good. There's your uh, squeeze indication right there. And boom, it shot up. Squeeze, normal, boom. Squeeze, normal, boom. And that's basically how this indicator works. And let's push it to the S&P 500. Because it got really crazy yesterday. Or really the last few days. You got to squeeze, but it's to the downside. And everything over here, really all this price, uh, spot price is really just flaky. And you can read it from there. You got to squeeze. It wasn't, it didn't happen for too long, but I think, uh, that's, this is when Powell started talking and basically it just died from there and you got that squeeze. Boom. I link another video in the description as well that explains the squeeze a little bit better. The guy on the video, he doesn't use the unbalanced volume. He uses a momentum indicator, but momentum indicator only uses price. It doesn't include volume. And that's one of my reasons for not using it his way. And basically, you got the same thing, parameters here. You got to squeeze. Boom. And you're just waiting for the indication. And after it went back to normal, boom. You got your breakout to the high side. Even though you got some heavy volume to the sell side, it wasn't enough to break it below average. Even though it did breach average right here, you got a squeeze. And it was saying it's going down to the bottom. But it also gave you an indication of you could have got back into the trade over here. But this is all just noise. And like I said, to cancel out some of that noise, I'll put it on here. And you didn't get all that noise before, uh, after that. And that's what really the Heikinashi does. It helps you filter out a lot of noise uh, when it comes to the open, close, open, close, open, close. And here you get it right here. All this is just low volume. And it, even though it touched the bottom of the Bollinger Band, it really didn't do anything. And you can see how the Bollinger Bands were squeeze, starting to squeeze onto the unbalanced volume. Indicating that, hey, it's a squeeze coming along or it's a quiet period. And you got a, a low volume to the high side. But this is how you use the indicator. And like I said, I'm going to link a, a link some of the other videos in the description to help you better understand the unbalanced volume and the squeeze as well. And you can find uh, anything online about the Bollinger Bands. And they're just a, a indicator of volatility. But I appreciate you guys' time and uh, watching this. If you're interested in indicator, link, the link is in the description. 
And uh, if you like this uh, indicator, please leave, I mean, yeah, leave me a like. And if you haven't subscribed, uh, go ahead and subscribe. I appreciate you guys. Y'all have a great time. and wish you the best in your trading.